I know you're interested in William Blake. I am indeed. He's one of the few Western philosophers. I mean, he was a poet principally, but his poetry is an encapsulation of a world view that I think it's perfectly legitimate to characterize as a philosophy. In, in, he, so he was one of the very few who was aware of how opposites coincide. In fact, it's a constant theme in his writing. And he has also many different styles. He has um, a mythical style, he has a very epigrammatic style, uh, and he manages to synthesize different kinds of knowing. He was actually very interested in contemporary science, but he also reacted against some of the ways in which it was being explained and the background mythos behind some of that exploration. And some of his work was to draw attention to the problems in that. Uh, a prominent figure in his mythology is uh, a god, Urizen, who is also your reason, and uh, who is in some ways a creative force, but in others a very limiting force. So there's a, a great deal of interest there. I, I was honoured to be asked to give the annual Blake lecture in London a few years ago. And uh, that was a wonderful moment because I was able to talk about a lot of things. But one of the images that has stayed with me and that I, I like very much from his painting, uh, which is often extraordinary, uh, obviously highly imaginative, is his take on Jacob's Ladder. Now in all the, the readings of Jacob's Ladder, of course, is a story from the Old Testament about Jacob um, in the wilderness, putting his head down in a place and dreaming and seeing angels coming uh, down from heaven uh, and going back up to heaven uh, on a ladder, disappearing into well. And most representations of this in art are linear. So they show literally a ladder, uh, just a straight line going up into heavens and usually one angel on it coming down. But there are many aspects of the picture of Jacob's ladder that Blake uh, depicted uh, that are of interest. One is that it is spiral-like. Now to me the spiral is a very important shape. It seems to me that very few things proceed in a straight line. They tend to proceed in a somewhat circular fashion, uh, which is another way of imaging the idea that opposites come together, because if they're extended far enough, they meet round in a circle. But it has seemed to me all my life that history tends to repeat itself, but not completely repeat itself. It repeats itself at another level. And so what you get is the movement in a spiral in which you come round to a certain point, but now you're at a higher level in which you can look down on the last recursion of the spiral. So the image of the spiral as a way in which we come towards an understanding of anything brings together the element of truth in the idea of a progress in a direction with the reality that that progress must take place by a circular motion of revisiting things, not just single-mindedly going, but taking in the whole picture as one goes round and ascends. So you see the ladder as a, a stairway that leads up into heaven in a sort of way that just leads the eye off into an infinity. It doesn't get closed off in a cloud in the way that many of the woodcuts and earlier pictures of Jacob's ladder do. Another nice thing about it is that there are figures who are discursing with one another and some of them are walking up and some are walking down. So it's like, almost like a place of, of learning, of spiritual and intellectual understanding in which people are traveling and walking and talking together, which is a very nice image of philosophy. You know, Aristotle didn't sit in a seminar room <laughs> in ancient Greece. Uh, he was a peripatetic philosopher. They believed his followers that you philosophized in walking, which is brings one again to the idea of something that is a process and is bound up with the body and is a motion from emanating from one's body as well as one's mind. 
So, um, yes, the idea of movement and talking and of a connection between the earth and the heaven and that this is a spiral one that never actually ends but takes you in a direction seems to me to sum up a huge amount of wisdom about how we come to an understanding of our own lives and of nature and of the cosmos.